So here is the cab of the Ford Transit. As you can see, it's the Mark VI. The gear stick is up by the steering wheel. Um, I've got a reversing camera there, which is mounted and the wires hidden up into the pillar. Um, coming off to the left side here, you can see there is a gray wall behind the seats with curtains over the middle seat. Um, and there is a hatch that you can see through to the front and to the back um, if you open that up. So there's the front, and um, this is just has an MOT. There are no lights on the dash. It's at 108,000 miles. And as you can see, there is the reversing camera. Here she is from the outside. As you can see, I'm stood back from the van a bit, little bit here. You can see the 265 uh, watt solar panel on the roof, and you can just about see the 28 by 28 Fiamma um, constant ventilation roof vent. Um, coming around here, you can see the reversing camera on the back above the number plate. Um, so that's fairly well hidden, nice and discreet. Um, there's no, no real damage. There are a few marks um, on the vehicle. I need to replace uh, the light there, the, the cover. Um, but this is the van from the other side. Um, so as you can see, white Ford Transit. Um, and then here we've got a sliding, sliding window in the side door. So that opens up and at the moment there's a magnetic curtain on the inside. Um, you can take that down. It's privacy glass. so. Uh, it's hard for people to see inside the van during the day. Hello and welcome to the inside of the Ford Transit. As you can see here, we've got a return kitchen with a nice double burner uh, hob on top and an oven. Um, down here to my side, I've got a bin compartment which also doubles as a seat. So there are two bins in here with two lids. Um, they both lift out so you can actually pull the bin out and you can go and empty that in a bin. Um, and down here, as you can see, I've carpeted the steps. So this is the same stuff you'd find on somebody's front doormat. So you can wipe your feet here um, and try and keep as much dirt outside of the van as possible. Um, off to the left here, we've got the gasset refill point. So this pops off um, just like it would on a car filling point. And you then attach your LPG um, filling hose to this, this point here and you'll refill your gas bottle. This is a really good and cheap way to refill your LPG when you're traveling Europe. It's also very, very easy because you don't have to worry about bottle exchanges. Um, so that goes back on that. And the LPG tank is actually stored just behind this refilling point, just inside here um, is the bottle. So that's sealed on the inside and then vented out through the bottom. So moving into the van, um, you can, we've got a, an oak countertop here, um, which I will show you in a minute, but I'm just going to go to here for, for, for the moment, and then we will cover this in a minute. So up above the kitchen here, you've got cupboards. Um, I used to store rices and pastas and sauces in here. Um, they open, they're on rollable catches, so they don't open when you're driving along. Um, this is nice pallet wood that's been sanded down, um, cut to size, and it's also been oiled with linseed oil. Um, and over here uh, we've got another cupboard exactly the same as before um, but in this one there are hooks so in this cupboard you can hang four mugs if you want to and if you wanted to you could also add more hooks in here as well so that closes up um, here you have a spice rack so all your herbs and spices you can keep here it's nice and hidden away um, and then moving down as you can see we've got a tiled splash back above the kitchen countertop um, I keep a bungee cord here on the oven you don't need to um, I just do it for a little bit of extra safety. Um, you can actually remove this oven if you want to. Um, the, the top lifts up here, um, and then you remove the top. These uh, come out on the side, and then you have your two burner hob. So you've automatically got a splash back here from the, um, from the hob, um, and off to the side as well to help protect your countertop. Um, and then over here, as you can see, I've got the kettle. That stays in the corner all the time on two cork mats and it never moves anywhere. So that's my oven. And then coming off here to the side, you can see that I've got three drawers. Um, these all come out, they're all secure. They don't move when I'm driving. I don't have any latches to keep them in, but they stay where they are. And there's also a safety catch at the back to stop those coming out if they did come out while you're driving along. So I keep cutlery in the top drawer here. And then I keep bowls and plates in the second one here and then anything I feel like keeping here. So behind these drawers is the solar panel contra charge controller and below these drawers is the battery bank just here. So in here you've got a two, two battery bank, 115 amp hours. Um, I've also got the monitoring, monitoring unit to tell me how much solar is coming into the van and what level my batteries are at. Um, and then moving across here to the side, this is where I keep my pots, pans, and trays for cooking. 
So I've just removed the drawers and as you can see behind here, this is uh, kind of the electrics area. So on the wall, uh, you've got your solar charge controller. Um, when it's flashing, it means that you've got power coming in. Um, the battery's at a good level. Uh, off to the side here, you've got your um, voltage sensitive relay. Uh, this is your uh, recharge unit from the main battery. So when you're driving along, this opens up and it allows power into the main batteries. Uh, you've got a fuse breaker here as well between the um, MPPT charge controller down to the batteries. So if anything goes wrong with the panel, it will cut that off um, and it will stop your batteries getting damaged. Um, and then down there is the tracer unit that I just showed you. So yeah, this is the electrics area, um, but these drawers go in here and that hides all the electric unit at the back. So you only need to take those out when you need to look at something, when you need to get back there. Um, other than that, it's all nice and hidden out of the way. Okay, so down here, you've got the, you've got the bed up the top here. Uh, moving down into the center, we've got the table. So there's the two chairs here that you can use for sitting at. Um, and this table just pulls out between the two. So you can use this while you're sat here or while you're sat here. You can even leave it out a little bit, little bit while you're in bed. Um, and then you can rest a coffee or a beer on it if you want to. Um, but be careful because you might kick it off when you're in bed. So you've got that there if you want it. Then moving down, there's a second drawer underneath here. Um, and I used to use this for clothes storage or documents, um, but it's quite a nice large drawer. Some people, you could use that for electrics or a laptop, um, but that's there if you want it. Slides in and out really nicely. And then there's just these catches here that keep that in place. Um, and then moving down, you've got your 50 litre uh, Waco Dometic compressor fridge. Um, so this opens up, this runs all of the time. Uh, it's got a freezer compartment up the top. Uh, you can change the whole fridge into a freezer if you wish. Um, but this, this stays on 24 hours a day um, and the solar panel keeps this running. Um, off to the side here, you might see a little black vent there in the wall. Um, that is from the Propex heater, which is actually underneath the toilet here, which I'm going to show you in a minute. So underneath this seat here is actually a separating toilet. Um, now this isn't a composting toilet, it could be if you want it to be. I don't use it enough to, to treat it as a composting toilet. It's really an emergency toilet for me. So I tend to use a plastic bag and then throw that away, but you could also use this um, for a um, porta potty um, storage if you wanted to. So you lift those cushions off there, um, the top of this seat comes off, um, and then you just move that out the way. And here you have a full toilet seat. So that lifts up and you've got a lovely toilet seat to sit on. Um, I'm just gonna get the camera and show you inside to show you exactly how this separator works, um, and then we'll move on to the bed area. So this is what the toilet looks like from the outside. As you can see, uh, you've got a separating unit at the front there. That drains down into a canister underneath. Um, I've thrown my one away, so I will have to buy another one for the next owner, um, or you can provide your own one. Um, but yeah, this is what the toilet looks like. Uh, urine goes to the front and solids go to the back. Like I said, you could, if you want to, treat this as a composting toilet and put a bucket in there um, and then use sawdust. Um, or you can put it in a bag, bin it, or you can use that storage area down there for a uh, camping toilet. Is the water storage area. As you can see, there's two 25 litre containers there. They don't move anywhere. Um, they're secured in by some wooden boxing around the bottom. Um, so they stay in place. Uh, so it holds 50 litres combined. And um, moving down here, you can see the pump uh, mounted on the bulkhead there. And off to the left uh, top hand corner, there is a switch for the water pump. Um, and that drain goes straight out to the bottom of the van. Here is the 11 kilogram gasset tank. Um, as you can see, it's a nice bottle. Uh, there is a vent hole in the bottom there. Um, and as you can see, mounted to the back wall, there is a gas manifold. Um, it's got a little uh, gauge on the tank as well, so it tells you roughly how full your bottle is. Um, and it does have a regulator as well. Um, that cupboard there is sealed. It is not metal, metal aligned, um, but it is sealed and vented out through the floor. So this is one of my favorite features and one that girls often comment on. Um, so you can hang clothes up. Um, you open your cupboard here. Um, inside I have a little light. Um, so a little LED bar light 
and then there I've got all my coats, jumpers, uh, shirts hanging up in the closet. Um, below that, down at the bottom, I have a box which I use for chucking shoes in, um, but that's all nice and contained out of the way. So if you're working, I was before, when I, before I went off traveling, um, I wore a suit every day, so this was really convenient for being able to hang my suit up rather than having to fold it up and look really scruffy. So that's a nice feature, especially if you're working and you need somewhere to really store your clothes to stop them from getting creased every day. Welcome to the bedroom area here. Um, I've got the curtain just here uh, for, for more privacy or in the winter when it gets a little bit colder. You can actually shut this when you don't have the fairy lights on. I put those on a couple of weeks ago. Um, but you can open this all the way. It covers the bed area. So if you've got someone in here, uh, it gives you more privacy, especially if somebody's using the toilet. Um, so that's a nice feature and it does keep it warm as well. So that goes back out of the way and there's a little tie just to keep that against the wall. Um, the bed's at a nice height, it's not too high. I generally use the seat to climb up or I just hop up into the bed. Um, and coming up here to the right hand side, you can see there's a control unit for the Propex heater. Now, I couldn't figure out where to put this at first, but I'm fairly lazy and I wanted to be able to turn my heater on in the morning without getting out of bed. So I put this here and it works great. When you're nice and cold in bed, you can just turn this heater on and it keeps you nice and warm. Um, and then just behind the Propex unit there, there's another heat vent as well. So in the winter, that keeps the bed area nice and warm and you can close this curtain so it keeps the heat in this area for longer. So this is the bedroom area. As you can see, it's tall enough for me to sit up. I am five foot 10, so I left enough headroom here so that you could sit upright in bed and read a book. And um, you can actually also lean against this wall here. Um, it's nice and straight. Um, and you've got reading lights off in the corner here. So if you want some extra light in the evenings, then you've got that for reading. Um, coming off here to the left hand side, I've got extra storage. So these flip down and in here, the whole length of the bed is closed storage. So that's been absolutely perfect for all my needs um, between the hanging wardrobe there, the drawer below the bed that I used for clothes storage and this, I've had more than enough for my clothes. So that's the bed area complete. Um, there is one more curtain here just behind my head, so you can shut that as well. Um, and above my head here actually, there's a roof vent which you can open up. Um, this is constant ventilation again, so even when this is closed, you will have a small amount of air coming in just to allow air to circulate nicely through the van. That cuts down on condensation. Um, it's really, really nice on hot days as well because you can open this one up and you can open the front vent up. You can keep the fan running if you want just to get a nice breeze coming through the van all the time. So above your hatch area here, um, there's two doors. Uh, you open the left one first and this whole area uh, in the transits, there's a shelf above the cab. Uh, we've ply lined this down the bottom. It's been insulated at the top um, and that is a huge area back there for storing food and stuff. So that's been really, really useful for the kitchen. And that closes again. These are unrollable catchers so they don't swing open um, when you're driving along. And a nice feature I like is the tea, coffee and sugar here. So they're just jars. You open that up, you've got your tea or your coffee um, and then you just put it back and twist it again. And that's secured to the top of the van. Um, you've seen the water storage, the gas storage is off here to the side. Um, again, the gas storage, I wanted to make sure it's super secure, so it's got a little latch on it, um, and then that just opens up there. Um, and then there is actually one more drawer above the gas cabinet here, um, and I, that's big enough for canned food, so that's where I tended to keep all of my canned food. Um, and I think that is the kitchen complete. There is another um, turbo fan just here. So this one opens up and it's, got, it's actually got a turbo fan in it. So you can suck air in or you can pull air out. So again, that's a really nice feature. Um, I'm just going to mention the lights while I'm here. Um, there's two lights in the van. These are on timers. So these are timed with the doors. Uh, I wanted those to come on when I was opening the door at night so that I could see straight away. Um, so those two come on automatically and they will go off. Um, when the door is closed. Uh, there's another four here which are great for lighting this living area um, and they are operated by a switch that's just below the bed. Okay so we're at the back of the barn doors here. Um, you just open them up, they both open nice and easily. Uh, here I've cladded the walls down to halfway. Uh, this is insulated behind here and I left the original handles on the bottom of the doors. Um, these doors actually open all the way around um, and they fold back against the side panels of the van. Um, 
which is really nice if it's a windy day um, you can do that and you don't have to worry about the doors being ripped off the side of the van uh, this one falls open here um, and then as you can see you've got your bed directly there which is really nice um, when you're by the beach you can lay in bed here you can back the van up to the view and then you can just lay in bed with your coffee or um, sit in bed with a book and you can enjoy the view um, in the comfort of your van um, so here is a little shelf uh, this pops down and, and folds against the door there you can put your mobile phone here or drinks um, so that folds up there it's on hinges uh, moving down there's a Saris bike mount here so if you've got a bike uh, you can actually attach the forks to the floor um, as you can see I've got the, the tire off to the side there um, and that just keeps the bike nice and secure while I'm driving along um, this area is very big it's about six foot six long it's the same length as the mattress up, up the top um, there is a fridge in the middle of that so that does come back into your storage area a little bit but there's still lots of storage under here as you can see um, I can get big boxes under here for tools and spares um, I put my surfboard off to the side um, there's a ladder and a skateboard and just down here in the corner next to the bed um, there's actually a charging point a USB charging point so this is really handy I put this here for when you're sleeping at night you can just charge your devices you can leave them here on this uh, little shelf folds up against the door um, or you can have them in bed with you if you want but it's a really handy area to charge your devices from. Uh, moving up here to the side you can see that the height here is almost the same height as the roof uh, minus the closed storage at the top um, and that area is totally clear and behind your hanging wardrobe um, there's actually some hanging shelves so behind the hanging wardrobe where you saw clothes are earlier there is more storage um, for boxes and medications and anything that you want to so that is the back of the van complete. Um, I hope this has been helpful if you're watching the eBay auction and good luck and happy bidding if you're bidding on this van.